Does it upset you when people say that you're exploitative? The good news is no one that's logical or intelligent has said that. I do this for minor league players. I do this because I lived it. I do this because it's wrong. The system is wrong. Anytime you build any business that's disruptive, there's going to be people that don't understand. Welcome to The Real Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Max Gershberg. You just heard a clip from Soledad O'Brien's new story about a business called Big League Advance. It's a new venture that invests not in stocks or bonds, but in human capital, baseball players. Some of the young prospects who hope to be tomorrow's major league stars are today getting what amounts to seed money from Big League Advance to launch their careers. In exchange, the company gets a sizable cut of their future earnings. Some believe it's a sorely needed service, helping to cultivate talent, while others argue that it's just the latest way of exploiting desperate young athletes who will do anything for their shot at stardom. On this episode, you'll be able to judge for yourself. You'll hear Soledad's full report, and later we'll be joined by the producer of the story, Nick Dolan, who will share how this segment came together, some of the challenges faced in tackling this particular subject, and whether he thinks Big League Advance will prove to be a fad or a trendsetter for the future. But first, here's Soledad O'Brien's latest real sports story. Once we get that data after the first month. In an office outside Washington, D.C., a group of financial analysts is trying to find the next big thing, looking for just the right investment that will make them all rich. Are you doing it by investor, by dollars coming in, or is this... But Michael Schwimmer and his team don't invest in stocks or startups. They invest in something more unpredictable. People, more specifically, baseball players. Barrel percentage, the best in the major leagues. Around here, the numbers crunchers watch not CNBC, but ESPN, and track not the stock ticker, but the box scores. The goal, to figure out which players are going to go bust and which will go boom. So if there is a a player who is out on this field, Mm -hmm. I could point to that player and you'd say, he's going to make it or he's not going to make it. I could tell you his expected career earnings in the major leagues throughout his entire career and the likelihood at every stop, like likelihood to make it, likelihood to become a Hall of Famer, like, you know, all of those different probabilities, I could give you that. With uh, how much accuracy? Better than anything else that's out there. So like an investor who buys shares in startup companies they think will hit it big, Schwimmer buys shares in startup ball players, minor leaguers, giving them cash today in exchange for a portion of their earnings tomorrow. Players like this one-time hopeful, who back in 2017 was a little-known teenager, but who Schwimmer identified as a future star. Our model said he was the second best prospect in the last 15 years. Last 15 years. We gave him a massive amount of money. Three years later, that teenager became one of the best players in the game. Tatis, like Superman, it's Fernando Tatis Jr. And not long after that, one of the richest, too. 14-year, $340 million contract. The contract stunned the sports world. But few knew the most stunning part of all, that a good chunk of that $340 million, believed to be 10% or $34 million, will go not to him, but to him. And Michael Schwimmer says there's a lot more where that came from, that he owns large chunks of the future earnings of dozens of baseball's young stars. We've got multiple people in the top 10 of MVP voting and Rookie of the Year voting and all this stuff. So that's when I realized, you know, look, okay, we've got got something here. How much is this worth to you? Are you rich now? This is not a charity. I tell the players, this is not a charity. We're investing in you because we think we're going to make money. And if we do make money, it's gonna be a heck of a lot more than we paid you. Investing in human potential is new to baseball, but I actually first heard about the concept when I was just starting out and someone made me an offer. I'm Soledad O'Brien. When I was a new reporter, someone offered that to me. Really? Yeah, it was interesting. Like, I think you're gonna be successful. I'd give you a chunk of money. I'd invest in you to help you figure that out. I think that's a great thing. And and guess what? There's always a number that makes sense for everybody. And if it doesn't, the person, you should just say no. 
I didn't take the offer. But there's a good reason so many young ballplayers take Schwimmers. They need the money. For all the millions paid to stars in the major leagues, the thousands of hopefuls spread across baseball's minor leagues make virtually nothing. A fact Schwimmer knows firsthand. Because before he invested in aspiring ballplayers, he was one himself. What was your salary? $5,500 for the year, which equates to about $2 an hour. I thought it was a joke at first. Really? I really did. And it wasn't. Life in the minor leagues is baseball's dirty little secret, a side of the industry few ever see. With living conditions like this, half a dozen players often sharing the same small apartment just so they can make the rent. The toughest thing that I witnessed was literally a player on my team in the dumpster looking for food. I mean, literally. It is extremely, extremely difficult, and I don't think the American public really realizes that. And he strikes out and Keel. Schwimmer was one of the lucky ones. He made it all the way to the big leagues, pitching for the Philadelphia Phillies before an injury ended his career at the age of 27. That's when, he says, he had an idea for a new line of work, to help other young players reach their dreams by fronting the money when they needed it most. The more money that you have in the minor leagues, the higher likelihood you are to make the major leagues. You can eat healthier. You can live in your own one-bedroom apartment on a mattress instead of an air mattress. And that helps you succeed. And I thought, well, there might be people that want to take on an investment, get money, in order to give themselves the best chance to make it. Schwimmer put together a proposal for a business he called Big League Advance. Now he just needed the money to pursue it. Enter Bill Miller, a billionaire known for investing in upstart ideas. Miller had once bet heavily on a couple of ventures that worked out okay, Amazon and Bitcoin. Now he would agree to help bankroll Michael Schwimmer. So when he came to do his proposal, what do you remember about it? I was surprised at how sophisticated it was. There's almost nothing that I could ask him that he hadn't thought about. Are you happy with your investment in BLA? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's going to be pretty hard not to make money on it. And the data that Michael showed us was at least 30% a year for, you know, 20 years or so. Our investors see the players that we have, and you can expect their returns. And that number could be massive. It could be in the multi-billions. The numbers don't lie. I believe it's going to be unbelievably successful. Why exactly is he so bullish? Well, consider a standard deal. Schwimmer says the numbers vary, but for a typical player, he might offer $350,000 in cash in exchange for 10% of that player's earnings for the rest of his baseball life. If that player makes, make up a number, $100 million, which would be a great contract, how much money will they pay you back on that $350,000 that you gave them up front? That would be $10 million if they did the full 10%. That's a lot of money on 350. Making $100 million is a lot of money. Of course, on the flip side, if Schwimmer and his team of numbers crunchers invest in the wrong player, they take the loss. If the algorithm is wrong, Mm -hmm. player never makes the majors. What do they have to pay back? Zero. Absolutely nothing. Are you mad about that when that happens? I am not. I know it's the risk that I'm taking, and our company is taking, and our investors are taking. Which makes the company's statistical analysis of each minor leaguer crucial. Schwimmer says it's their secret sauce. We are trying to figure out what are they doing that is predictive to future success and what are they doing that is harmful to future success. If I wanted to see the various measurements of the algorithm popped up on your screen, could I do that? No. Why are you laughing? This is our secret. This is, why don't you you go to Coke's uh, offices and ask for the recipe there and see if they'll let you in and give you the recipe. The day we visited the Big League Advance offices, one of Schwimmer's best investments had just played one of his best games of the year. Look at the animal. He's one of your guys. Oh, yeah. A great Big League Advance example. Like, prime example. Around here, watching the highlights is like watching a stock go up or down. How often, when you come in here, do you see your guys up on the screen? All the time. We've got, you know, 60 players in the major leagues right now. This is what we do. I always think you can do everything better. And with the success of all those players, Schwimmer has become a wealthy man who recently built his dream home, complete with all the features of a star athlete's house. 
a basketball court with an automatic rebounding machine. That could be good. A golf simulator so he can play any course in the world. And a home gym where Schwimmer's wife, a personal trainer, puts him through a daily workout. It's enough that some wonder if he's the solution to the exploitation of minor leaguers or just another part of the problem, preying on vulnerable young players, especially those from poor Latin American countries where so much of baseball's best talent is from. Do you think they're taking advantage of the players who are in a desperate situation in many cases? You walk into a home of an indigent family, they're unsophisticated, often many of them don't have high school educations, and here's $800,000. They're often going to accept it immediately. Baseball's super agent, Scott Boris, represents dozens of players across the major and minor leagues. He claims that BLA often approaches these players directly without looping their agents into the process. The biggest concern we had was that our players were being solicited without our knowledge. The issue is not what they're offering. The issue is the tactics they're using to get the players to sign the contracts. We tell every single player, we want your agent on the call. Is that right? Every single one. And do their agents join? Well, the players will very often, you know, 30% of the time, like, I don't want my agent to know about this. I built this company by players for players, not for agents. Still, Schwimmer insists that BLA has never signed a player without having the player's own lawyer review the contract. In fact, Schwimmer says that before each signing, he requires the player to name their lawyer on camera in a videotaped interview. What is the name of the lawyer who reviewed the contract with you? And make sure the players know what they're getting into. We do an interview with the player on camera, asking him questions. Do you understand if you make $500 million, you're going to owe us $50 million over the course of your career? If they can't answer the questions correctly, we don't do a deal. That I will... sounds like you're protecting yourself for a later lawsuit. No, absolutely Say not. Say this into the microphone. It's the literally exact opposite. I would not be able to sleep at night if I knew a player did a deal with us and didn't fully understand it. But Schwimmer acknowledges that at least 50% of the players they've signed are from poor Latin countries. Players like Fernando Tatis Jr., Fran Mil Reyes, and this year's sensation, Yermin Mercedes. Mercedes says he made the deal with Schwimmer's company when he was in the minors because his family back home in the Dominican Republic needed the money. I have a big family. Uh, they need me all the time because right now um, I'm the head of my family. I just want to uh, do the best I can do for them. So you got $165,000 from BLA? Yeah, something like that, yeah. And then what percentage of your future earnings do they then get? Fifteen. Fifteen percent. Yes. If Mercedes keeps hitting, he will make millions. That's the good news. The bad news is that for the rest of his career, he'll owe Big League Advance 15 percent of every MLB check he earns. They gave you 165000 You have to pay them, if you make $10 million, $1.5 million. I gave it to them, yeah. You know why? Why? Because those people trust in me. They believe in me, you know. Nobody believed in me at that point, and they believe in me. Yeah, I mean, the story kind of broke my heart, right? He needed the money for his family. Thank God for us. In the DR. Right? How else was he going to get the money? Imagine what would happen to his family if he didn't exist. These are real lives that we are changing. But agent Scott Boris says the more these players have to pay, the more they're going to regret the deal they made. Do you think these players, maybe when they're paying back millions on 165000 that they were given, that's when you'll hear the complaints and the anger? Their level of sophistication will grow as they become earners. Did they need the money? Did it resolve a problem for them? That's always the case. But the question is, how pleased are they going to be when they're 45? Does it upset you when people say that you're exploitative? The good news is no one that's logical or intelligent has said that. I do this for minor league players. I do this because I lived it. I do this because it's wrong. The system is wrong. Anytime you build any business that's disruptive, there's going to be people that don't understand. And that's fine. And that's why, why do you think I'm here talking with you? So people can understand. Mm -hmm.
We're now joined by senior coordinating producer for Real Sports and the producer of that story you just heard, Nick Dolan. Nick, you know how much I enjoy our regular office banter about the Knicks, the Mets, pretty much any sports topic. So, of course, I'm delighted to have you on the podcast. It's great to be with you, Max, and abuse our audience with our normal banter. (laughs) So, Nick, you're a big baseball guy yourself. How did this story first get on your radar? I actually heard about this story in 2016 when Schwimmer was just starting out. I thought it was a really interesting idea, of course. And I didn't hear very much about it again until earlier this year when the Tatis contract was signed, as we talked about in the piece. It was known at that time that Fernando Tatis, who had just signed a $340 million contract, was a client of Michael Schwimmer's. And that was a kind of a proof of concept for for Schwimmer's company, at least publicly. He says not for him. He knew all along it was a hit. But publicly, when he signed that $340 million contract and and people started realizing how much uh, money could be flowing big league advances way, that's when we realized. And and, and really, Stephen Lorenzo, an associate producer on the show, said, you know, we got to do this. And I go, "I, I think you're right. Yeah. Well, the story at its core is about human capital, a somewhat complicated idea. How challenging is it as a producer to take an abstract subject matter like that and distill it? And was that a concern of yours going into this project? Steve and I were both concerned about about that. I mean, human capital, potentials, a lot of financial terms here. This is a private equity fund. And a lot of people don't know what a private equity fund is. Uh, you know, I had to learn. We, we learned about it. So there's a lot of financial terms involved in this story that we had to get comfortable with. But it's actually quite simple when you think about it. It's no different than investing in a company or a stock. The Schwimmer likes to buy low. He likes to buy the commodity low when it's not clear what its potential value is. But what he thinks has real potential, he can get it for a low price. And then he waits. He waits as that kid goes from single A ball to double A ball to triple A ball. And then Schwimmer hopes to the major leagues. And once he gets to the major leagues, that moment that that player gets to the major leagues, the investment starts to pay off. And then the question is, will it pay enough? The player doesn't pay anything to Schwimmer until his first day in the major leagues. Schwimmer hit it big with the Tatis deal, but do we have a sense as to BLA's batting average, how many of the guys they're investing in end up making it and returning to the company a a sizable profit? Well, it's a private equity company. Emphasize the word private. What we know, we've seen their SEC filings. We know that they have $156 million under management. Schwimmer says they've invested in 350 players of whom 60 at this point have made the major leagues to make the math work for the, for his investors to make money. He says his batting average has to be about, he has to hit on one out of five players. Okay. Well in baseball, 200, you know, that's not even that high, but realize that around 10% of minor leaguers, just one in 10 make the major leagues for one day. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, It's long odds, but he gets to invest in anyone he wants to. He's very, very confident about his ability to pick the right players. Both you and I, Nick, previously have produced real sports segments on that long road for minor leaguers, the plight and and the ways in which baseball has forcibly kept down their wages. So from what you've seen, how much of a need is Schwimmer filling with BLA? How desperate are today's minor leaguers for this sort of assistance? Well, so Max, yes, the show we've been reporting on salaries in the minor leagues for a while. You know, when when Real Sports first reported about the salaries in the minor leagues, it was something like $5,500 a year. The key is also that minor leaguers are only paid for the five-month season that they play. They're not paid for spring training. They're not paid at all in the offseason. These guys make very little money. Now, Major League Baseball has raised minor league salaries on a percentage basis they've raised them tremendously 30 40 percent increases the only problem is on a real dollar basis for the player that means that the salary went from say five thousand to eight thousand dollars a year some cases some of these guys are making nine or ten thousand dollars for a season the problem for them is they have to pay their cell phone bills they've got to pay their apartment they've got to pay rent they get moved from single A to double A. They got to find another apartment. 
advocates for minor leaguers still say they're making sub minimum wage. And in fact, Major League Baseball argues that it's legal for them to pay a uh, sub minimum wage because they don't they believe this is seasonal work. At least 50 percent of Schwimmer's players, as your piece notes, are from poor Latin countries. Those guys, of course, in many cases need the most help. But exploitation of Latin players has been a problem in baseball for a long, long time. So do you believe Schwimmer is uniquely targeting those players? And if so, is that a good thing or a bad thing? There's an extraordinary amount of talent in poor Latin countries. That's where you know, something like 30% of the major leagues at this point is made up of talent from that part of the world. There's a lot of talent there. Yes, he's looking there. He's absolutely looking there. He says the other reason he over-indexes in Latin American players is because they sign earlier and therefore there's more data on them. That's empirically true. They are signed younger. They're signed at 16 years old. American players are signed out of high school, uh, so they're older. So Latin American players, there's, he says there's more data on them. And of course, he's a data scientist. He loves data. And he says the more information he has about a player, the better he can predict that player's future. But there is no question that those players are coming from greater poverty. And one more thing, that the Dominican system is based, these players, once they get to the U.S., are often indebted to what are called buscones. There's a street agents in the Dominican Republic, and they take a piece out of these players as they come up as they're as young as 10 or 11 or 12, because the buscones are training the players. That costs money. And the way in which the buscones get paid is when the player signs. So these guys lose a huge percentage of their signing bonus if they get signed to the buscones before they even get here. They need the money more than anybody. You noted earlier the private nature of BLA and how certain aspects of this story just could not be made public. How frustrating and challenging is it as a producer navigating those gray areas and navigating that zone between what you can report versus what you cannot? Uh, well, it's difficult. You know that, Max. I mean, it's it's difficult. I mean, Schwimmer, there were some players like your me and Mercedes, uh, who we speak to in the piece, who were perfectly comfortable talking about their deals. We also talked to another, a player who, who never made it and it says he used the money for uh, to go to graduate school. So that's a very happy BLA story. It wasn't a good investment for Schwimmer, but it turned out to be a very good deal mm. for the player. You mentioned your mean Mercedes. He seems content with that deal he cut with Big League Advance. Is that what you found with most players, that they understand the deal, they're okay with it, even in hindsight? Or is there some frustration or regret from guys who have entered into these agreements? The players that we were able to speak to and were happy with the deals. There has not been any sense of frustration. People in baseball, as Scott Boris says in the piece, think that there is an undercurrent and that players, as, they, as this goes along, they may think differently about the deal that they made once they see the percentages. Specifically, obviously, the players who don't make Major League Baseball it's empirically a good deal for them as long as they saved, as long as they didn't get into tax trouble. There are tax issues with, with this money. You have to pay taxes on the money that BLA gives you. And if you don't save enough of it to pay your taxes, and we have heard of players who did not, that can be a problem. The issue could become with players who, who make the majors and, and end up paying 10, 20, 30 times what they were given and say, hey, this, this doesn't seem fair. That's the question that Boris asks. Well, Scott Boris made clear that he is not a fan of Big League Advance, but given that he too is in the business of taking large sums of money off the top of player contracts, I have to ask, Nick, do you believe he's genuinely concerned for the player's well-being or simply for the health of his own business? Realize, Max, they don't compete. I don't see what Boris does as in competition with Schwimmer. He thinks it needs to be regulated. He, he doesn't like the sort of wild, wild west nature of this. The products like what Schwimmer offers are unregulated by MLBPA or Major League Baseball. There's nobody, nobody watching um, the practices here. Um, and Major League Baseball, you know, we, we, we wanted to talk to Major League Baseball and we wanted to talk to the union. Not, neither, neither chose to talk to us. And the union has made clear that they do not in any way endorse the product. But on the other hand, they haven't done anything about Schwimmer. And, and that probably has something to do with something that you know very well. The Major League Baseball Players Association 
The union for professional baseball players in this country does not, underline, does not represent minor league players. They have no interest here, essentially. As crazy as that might seem, even though these guys are, you know, some of them will be major league players. What do we think the trajectory is specifically for big league advance? They they have a lot of guys on their roster now. What does Schwimmer say his long-term vision is for the growth of this business model? Well, in financial terms, he's had two funds already that he raised money for. That's how, how he got to $156 million total. He says he's raising money for a third fund. And according to Schwimmer, interest is high. He expects to be able to raise more money. And, you know, I guess we'll see in his next filing, we'll see how much money he raised and we'll see how much interest there is and we'll see how he does. And Fran Mill Reyes, Fran Mill Reyes is, as we talk about in the piece, is not a free agent yet. That's one to watch. How much Mm -hmm. money does Fran Mill Reyes sign for? Schwimmer also believes that as the company matures, more players will feel comfortable speaking publicly about having been a client and having given a percentage for their future earnings. Now, if that happens, then he'll he'll get more publicity and and who knows. Nick, are there other companies following this model of big league advance and investing in players? So there are other companies that invest in young baseball players. uh, Absolutely. And it's, and it's, it seems to be an emerging trend, but there's a big distinction. The other companies that do this focus on players, mostly major league players, young players who've already made it. And what those companies are trying to do, they're actually in competition with the teams. The team has a young star and the team wants to sign that star for as little money as possible, right? And the player may need money. So these companies come in and say, hey, don't don't make those team-friendly deals. Don't do those Ronald Acuna deals with the Atlanta Braves. Don't sell away all your your free agent years. We'll give you basically a bridge loan. This is what the other companies are. We'll give you a bridge loan. We'll give you enough money to buy the house, buy your mother a house, bring your family, do whatever you need or want. But don't give away all your human potential just because the team, just because the system in baseball makes you wait six years until you're a, a free agent. We'll give you the bridge loan at a certain at a certain percentage, and you get to free agency, and you will be able to really maximize your potential. That's what the other companies are selling. Schwimmer's selling something totally different. Mm-hmm. He's saying to the minor leaguer, "You have almost no chance, no chance to make it in baseball if you look at this honestly, because only one in ten do. You could get hurt. You could be behind somebody who's just better than you in the minors, but." You could have, you may not just may not have the right path. You could, any number of things could stop you from getting to the majors. And then you leave minor league baseball entirely. You leave it with bupkis. You spent 15 years playing this game and you get nothing. That is Schwimmer's pitch. Don't leave this game with nothing. We'll give you something. If you make it big, whatever you pay us back is nothing compared to what you'll make, especially because. You have to compare it to the notion that you could make nothing. Right. That's really Not. why Schwimmer's pitch is so that combined with how little money they're making in the minor leagues. But it's that high risk nature, that all or nothing nature of baseball that makes Schwimmer's product pretty attractive to lots of young players. And it's a really interesting concept. Yeah, not a bad pitch. Well, Nick, the whole concept of athletes as investable commodities and this this business, is it's very interesting, certainly bears watching. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast to talk about it. That's my pleasure, Max. It was a lot of fun. And Nick's story is just part of this month's episode of Real Sports. Also on the new show, David Scott examines the IOC's relentless push towards the Tokyo Olympics, no matter the cost to public health. He looks at attempts made to divert vaccines from COVID hotbeds and vulnerable communities to young and healthy athletes. Mary Carrillo introduces us to one of the best female street skaters in the world, Alexis Sablone, as Sablone gets ready to go to Tokyo to represent the U.S. in skateboarding, a new addition to the games. And Brian Gumbel updates his reporting on the global bike boom that took the world by storm during the pandemic. Many countries embrace the new trend of making cities more bike friendly, but it turns out the U.S. wasn't quite as accommodating. You can catch those stories and all recent episodes of Real Sports with Brian Gumbel on HBO Max. I'm your host, Max Gershberg. Thanks for listening, and please join us again next time.